In today's video, we are going to take a look at creating unit tests. Unit tests could be used to test individual components of source code within my application. So these could be one or multiple methods within my classes. And these are the very basic methods of improving quality because a unit test will allow me to ensure that my methods are working exactly the way that they're supposed to work. Now, instead of creating very basic classes and methods like addition, subtraction, and so forth, I'm actually going to use a real world example, and I'm gonna write a test for the project that I'm working on, which is my Spring Boot API Gateway. In my last video, I have actually implemented JWT authentication within my API Gateway, and you can click on the link above if you would like to visit that video. But now what I'm going to do is write unit testing for my JWT token util class. If I look at my JWT token util class, it has got two methods to generate the authentication token and to validate the authentication token. So we are now going to write a test case to test these methods. If you are using JUnit, you need to ensure that your dependencies are included in your pom.xml if you are using Maven for your dependency management. For JUnit 5, I would need to include the dependency JUnit dash Jupyter. But because I'm using Spring Boot, I actually don't need to include this dependency because this dependency is actually getting packaged directly when I include Spring Boot starter test. So I can leave that dependency in there and that will automatically allow me to use the JUnit J classes. In order to create my test class, if I'm using IntelliJ IDE, I can simply right click on my class and then click on generate and then click on test. This will allow me to choose a testing library. I will leave that as JUnit5 and the class name is automatically created over here. And this is the usual convention is the name of the class and test suffixed after that. And I wouldn't change any of the other settings for now. Uh, the only thing I would do is choose these methods and these are the methods for which I need to gen generate test methods. Now, if you look at my test class, you will see that it's actually located exactly in the same package as my main class. The only difference is that the, my main classes are under source main Java and my test classes are under source test Java. You will also notice that any of the test methods that are generated within my test class are marked with a test annotation. Okay, so in this test class now, I want to test the methods of the JWT token util class. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is create an instance of that class. I'm gonna say private JWT token util, token util. And then I'm gonna add a setup method, which I can run before each test to instantiate my token util. So I'm going to say public void setup. And then I'm going to just instantiate the token util with a new to JWT token util. And I'm just going to annotate this with the annotation called before each. which basically means that before running each and every test, it's gonna reinstantiate my token util. Now let's write my test case to generate a new token. So I'm gonna just say string token is equal to token util dot generate token. And let me give an ID of test. Okay, so that basically calls the generate token method to test whether that's working correctly or not. And I'm gonna use assertions to make sure that I have generated a token. So I'm gonna say assertions dot assert not null, make sure my token is actually not null. So this needs to include a package, which is junit dot jupyter dot api dot assertions. And also I'm gonna make sure that my token has some length. So I'm going to assert true to make sure that the token dot length is greater than zero. Now I can run or debug my test case directly from the IDE. If I click on this icon over here, you can see the run and debug options over here. I can put a breakpoint 
on my actual method over here before I run my test so that when I debug my test, it will actually stop on that breakpoint. Okay, so now it is on this breakpoint. Now let's step through my code and see how that goes. Okay, so I can see that it's going to give me a null pointer exception over here because my config is actually null. So in this case, my testing is not going to work as I expect it to work because my auto wired config object is not getting loaded. So we'll go ahead and have a look at how to get around this problem. So there are a couple of things that I need to do. And in this case, the test case that I have created, the primary purpose of my test case is to just to test this method. So I don't want to start auto wiring and, and doing everything that is unrelated to my test that I want to create. So the couple of things that I need to do is first of all, I want to mock this object. And the second thing is if I mock this object, I need to write my classes in a way that actually allows my code to be testable. And this is really, really important to make sure that my code is testable. So the way that I have auto wired this, this property over here in my class is actually not allowing my code to be testable. So the ideal method for this is to do a constructor injection. So I'm going to create a constructor in this class. And I'm going to make my this variable as final. Now, this is the ideal way to inject your dependencies because this allows your code to be testable. And if I do this now, I can actually inject the config property, which I will mock in my test case directly into my class. And that will allow me to run my method independently. So now coming back to my test class, I will actually create a new variable over here called JWT config. So JWT config, config. And I don't want to test this functionality. So I'm just going to mock this. So I'm going to use Mockito to mock my classes. So I'm just going to annotate this with at the rate mock. The Mockito classes are included by default in the Spring Boot starter test package. But if that's not the case, then if you're not using Spring Boot, then you'll have to explicitly include the Maven dependencies. So over here, I'm mocking my config. And the only thing that I need to do now is inject my mocked config back into the JWT token neutral class. So I'm just going to provide the config over there. And within my JWT config, I have a couple of properties, which are the validity and the secret. So I, I need to set these properties to allow my test to run successfully. So what I'm going to do is back in my test class, I'm just going to use Mokito to inject the values to this class. And to do that, I need to use Mokito dot when config dot get secret then return some value. Okay, so I need to include this in my in, uh, includes. And similarly, when it asks for the validity, I'm just going to inject the value that I need to return. So when it gets the validity, then I need to return a value of the type long because validity is a long. And let's set a validity of 20 minutes. So in this case, my JWT token user util class is now um, testable because I'm injecting the dependency via the constructor parameter. So let's go back into my test class and let's debug this method.
Uh, in this case, I have forgotten to add one more annotation. So in my test class, I need to add another annotation, which is extend with mockito extension dot class. So I need to include these classes as well. Okay, so now that I have included that, let me go ahead and debug my test case. Okay, now you can see that it's actually in here and you also see that the config is actually loaded with a mock mocked config. So let me just now step through my test case. You can see that it's now getting the validity and expiry from the config that I have set. And I'll just run through this method. And then you can see my test case has completed successfully. So in this example, we have just seen a basic way to mock our dependencies and create a simple test case to generate a JWT validation token. And verification is just to ensure that the token is not null and then the length of the token is greater than zero. I can also name my test methods to be a bit more descriptive. So in this case, I'm trying to generate a valid token. So let me just put a valid suffix over here. And one of the other um, new features in JUnit 5 is to add a description. So I can add an annotation called display name. And over here, I can add a description which uh, can describe my test case in more detail. So in this case, let me write down that we are generating a valid token. JWT authentication token. And if I rerun my test case, let's run my test case directly without debugging. You will see that when the runner is running, it actually shows me the display name rather than the method name. Now, similar to my first test case, I have written a bunch of other test cases as well. So I was generating a token in my first test case. And in my other test cases, I'm validating the token. So in this case, I'm validating a malform token. So malform token means that my token is actually not valid. I'm providing a malform token in my header and I'm expecting an exception, which is JWT token malformed exception. And similarly, I'm validating some other incorrect scenarios. So in your test cases, you can add both negative and positive scenarios. When you're running your Maven test goal, it will go in and run all the unit tests that are available in your package. But you can also do that. So if I want to test the whole test class, I can go in and run the whole thing and it will go and run all my tests. So in this video, we have seen a very basic example of creating my unit test cases. We have also mocked our dependencies and had a look at how to create my classes more testable by doing constructor injection. I really hope you find my video useful and thanks a lot for watching.